Picking out a stock to buy as a beginning investor can be like trying to pick out the perfect movie to watch on Netflix. There are so many choices, and most of them you've never heard of before. And if you make the wrong choice, well, that pretty much ruins your Friday night. Selecting the right stock to invest in can be tough, but with the right plan and methodology, it doesn't have to be. So today, in this beginner's guide to stock selection, I'm gonna break down my thought process on how I pick the right stocks for my investment strategy through the three criteria that I use to evaluate. And this video is not just all concepts. I'm actually gonna walk you guys through tactically each step in the process with a real life stock example. So go and grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. Welcome back to Daniel's Brew, where I talk personal finance, investing, and career development, all while drinking a cup of coffee. So before we dive deep into our topic today, let me just level set the conversation. Today, I'm talking about long-term investments and how to pick the right corporate stocks in this video. For swing trading or day trading, or evaluating other types of equities like mutual funds or ETFs, there are a lot of other considerations to take into account. So we'll save those topics for another video. Also, if you haven't already checked out my beginner's guide to the stock market, where I outline the fundamentals of trading within the stock exchanges, make sure you check that out here. All right, so now that we're level set, for the sake of this exercise, let's say that I wanna dive deep into the technology sector and I'm considering buying some Microsoft stock. The first of my three criterions when evaluating a stock is to look at the company fundamentals. Fundamental analysis is the method of assessing a stock's inherent value by looking at all of the company's business characteristics, which includes tangible aspects like revenue, EBIT, earnings figures, assets on hand, etc., as well as intangible traits like the company's brand equity or the disruptiveness of their technology or the effectiveness of their C-suite. Honestly, there's so many things here that you could look at. And if you try to evaluate every metric or every aspect of the company's business, you might end up getting analysis paralysis. So instead, I generally choose to focus on the following three fundamental factors. The first is earnings performance. Every publicly traded company reports earnings on a quarterly basis. And for those of you not familiar with the term, earnings is just a fancy way of saying net income, or in other words, the margin after all of the operating expenses of running a business and all of the taxes have been taken away. Simply put, it's the final profit that remains in a business after all of the expenses have been removed. The timing of these earnings releases is based on each company's fiscal calendar. So they vary from company to company, but they do all report four times a year. Now the purpose of the earnings reports is to give shareholders a review of the company performance in the last quarter. These reports include updates on the company's revenue, profits, how they track against financial projections, what new programs or initiatives they've undertaken, and what the forward-looking guidance looks like for the upcoming quarters. As publicly traded companies, they have an obligation to us, the shareholders, to be as open and transparent about their performance as possible so that we as traders can make the most informed decision we can make when we're considering their stock for purchase. And this is one of the main reasons they have these quarterly earnings reports. Now, one thing that's of key importance in these reports is the company's EPS, or earnings per share. The EPS is defined as the amount of profit that the company has earned last quarter divided by the number of outstanding shares of stock out in the stock market. So basically, how much profit does the company have for every share of stock that's out in the open market? Each company reports this out in their quarterly earnings statement, and it's a good proxy for how profitable a company is. Now, before every quarterly statement, financial analysts will try to predict what they think the EPS will be at each earnings release. And at every earnings release, a comparative analysis will be done to determine whether or not the company beat, met, or missed analyst projections for that quarter. And as such an important profitability metric, when a company beats EPS expectations, they're seen as having done a really good job and the market sentiment turns positive and generally the stock spikes up for the day. But when the company misses, the opposite feeling occurs and the stock price generally falls for a short period of time. Now this isn't 100% true for every stock and for every situation, but generally speaking, this seems to be the trend that most stocks follow. Now let me walk you guys through how I use this data in my stock selection process. I start by looking up the historic performance of the company's EPS versus analyst projections. If you're using a full service brokerage like E-Trade, then you can simply navigate to their earnings section for every stock and then scroll down to the bar chart to see this information. Now what I look for here is a consistent track record of EPS releases that have beaten analyst projections. It doesn't have to be green every single quarter, but if it shows a steady track record of having more green than red, then that's a good sign. In the case of this example, it looks like Microsoft has beaten expectations for the last 11 quarters, which is amazing. Here's another example of Amazon. It's not all green, but there are steady periods of exceeding analyst expectations, and that's what you want to see. Now caveat, 
past performance is not a 100% accurate indication of future performance, but if they have a good history of beating earnings expectations, then you can feel confident about making that same bet for the future quarters as well. Now, the second thing that I look for when it comes to fundamental analysis is the profitability of the company. Regarding profitability, the first thing that I typically look for is the net profit margin line of the company. This percentage represents how much net profit that they have, that they could invest in the growth or innovation or any other new aspect of the company, which means it's leftover profit after even paying the shareholders a dividend. So the higher this number is, the more pure profit they have. In the case of Microsoft, they have a 31% net profit margin percentage. Now that's incredibly high. There are only a handful of Fortune 500 companies that can even come close to operating at this level of profitability. I love finding companies like this, and it gives me confidence to invest in companies with high profit margins because it tells me that these are the companies that are best poised for transformation and innovation in their organizations as times change because they're the ones that are financially able to do so. Now, another factor in profitability that I look at is the PE ratio. Now, this is a common one that most investors start with when they're looking to measure up a stock, and it stands for price to earnings ratio. And it's basically calculated by taking the current stock price and dividing that by the EPS, which we just talked about earlier. Basically, what this shows is compared to the amount of profit that a company has per share of stock, how much more is the actual price of the stock? In the case of Microsoft, their most recent EPS is that of $5.40. And Microsoft stock, as of April 8th of 2020, is trading around $165. That means that this stock price is trading at around 30 times more than the EPS. In other words, 30 times more than the amount of profit that this company has made per share of stock. And that's why analysts sometimes refer to this number as a company's earnings multiple. So why is this important? By distilling the profitability of a company down to the EPS and dividing the current stock price to that figure, we can get to a somewhat common and impartial value upon which we can measure how expensive a stock price is compared to the profit that it brings in. It's one way to measure as fairly as possible how overvalued or undervalued a stock price might be. For example, we know that Microsoft has a PE ratio of 30. And if we compare that to another large company like Apple, it seems like they have a PE ratio of 21. So an analyst might say, in this particular case, if we're only looking at the PE ratio and we don't take into account any other factors in our stock selection process, then Apple might be a less expensive buy because you're only paying for 21 times the amount of profit that they've earned for each share of stock. Do you guys follow me here? Let me know in the comments section below if you thought this explanation was clear. It can be a little bit confusing, so I just wanna make sure that I'm doing a good job of explaining this concept to you guys. Now, the third and last factor that I look at when it comes to company fundamentals is the business model and growth potential of the company. Now, this part of the analysis is more art than science, but at a high level, I wanna understand what all of the company's business units are, how the P&L operates, and whether or not I feel like this company has the potential to grow into the future. As a long-term investor, it's important to know at least the basics of how your company operates in terms of the products and services that it provides, how it generates income, and what plans they have for innovation and progression within their industry. Now, how I acquire this information is that I usually go to that particular company's website and I go to their investor relations section. Within this section, there are usually key press releases that highlight important and noteworthy information about the company, as well as recordings of their latest quarterly release press conferences and the annual report that comprehensively summarizes the yearly performance of the business as a whole. I generally try to read as much of all of this as possible. Here's a look at what the most recent annual report looks like for Microsoft. If you look at this report, it does a great job of outlining Microsoft's projection of where the technology industry is headed, Microsoft's current charter to align to the trajectory of the industry, past financial performance, and an overview of the different business units and how they've contributed to the overall success of the company as a whole. There's a lot to glean from all of this information. And to be honest, if you're interested in technology as a subject, this can actually be a pretty fun read. Absorbing all of this information helps you understand how solid their brand is, how strong their strategic planning is, and whether or not their leadership team has the right mindset to carry this company into the future. All key things to evaluate when you're deciding to invest in a stock. And now that wraps up fundamental analysis, which was the first of my three criteria. Now the second major step in my stock evaluation process is studying financial analyst research. Now there are hundreds of thousands of professionals out there whose sole job is to analyze macroeconomic conditions and market trends to provide large banks and financial institutions like investment firms with recommendations on what industries, sectors, and companies they need to invest in. And as part of this work, they evaluate stocks of individual companies and provide something called an outlook 
or a price target, which is a prediction of which stocks to buy and what price they'll hit within the next 12 months. As retail traders, normally we'd have to pay for research like that, but some brokerage firms will provide this to you for free as part of their standard service. E-Trade happens to be one of these firms, so let me take you there and show you how to read this information and tell you what I look for when I look at these analyst projections. So here's the aggregated analyst research page for Microsoft. The first thing you'll notice right off the bat is the price chart of the analyst targets. So as you can see, out of the 27 financial analysts that have provided 12-month outlooks, the highest price projection is $212. The lowest projection is $160, which this stock has already met, and the average price that these analysts think Microsoft stock will hit in the next 12 months is 192. Now you should always take these analyst recommendations with a grain of salt because they're usually only right about 60 to 70% of the time, but it's still good insight to know. Below the chart, it actually shows the 27 analysts and more detail regarding their ratings, including articles that expand upon their stock buy ratings and prices. So you can see what factors led them to their particular price targets. And below that, there are other industry-leading research firms that publish their own stock ratings and actions, which you can read to get even more depth on whether or not your stock would make a good long-term investment at this point. It's important to gather as much perspective as you can so you can be aware of the broad spectrum of opinions on a particular stock so that you can make the most informed decision in your stock selection process. So that covers criteria number two. Now the last check that I perform before deciding to purchase a stock is to check with my personal intuition. Do I know and trust the brand of this company? Do I enjoy the products or services that this company provides? Do I believe this company's offerings will be important in the future and be pivotal to the ever-changing landscape of the consumer and commercial marketplace? <laughs> These are the types of questions that I ask myself to make sure that I have a good gut feeling about this company before I invest. At the end of the day, you have to have a good feeling about what you're about to invest in. I know you're supposed to take the emotions out of trading, but we're not robots. And part of the fun and the joy and the excitement of taking an ownership stake in a company is knowing that you like what this company does and that you're proud to have an ownership stake in the stock. It's not the most quantitative or empirical step within my stock selection process, but for me, it's actually one of the more important ones. Now that pretty much sums up at a high level the outline of my stock selection process. But whenever I speak to people about this topic, without fail, this question always comes up. Hey Daniel, what about reading charts and indicators and the technical analysis side of stock selection? Well, when I usually make swing trades, technical analysis is a very important part of my research. I look at things like moving averages, Bollinger Bands, RSIs, chart candles, etc. But for long-term investing, these technical indicators really aren't that useful, especially when you're looking at a five to 10 year time horizon. Technical analysis is important when you're trying to focalize on the exact buy point and sell point to maximize the spread between your entry and exit margin. But for long-term investing, it's really not that important to be that precise. Sometimes I buy low and sometimes I buy high. But if I've really done my research and picked the right company that fits my investment strategy and I'm planning on holding it long-term, then regardless of what my entry was, I'm sure I'll see a nice return whenever my time horizon is up. But on a side note, I'm also planning on creating a guide to swing trading in the near future, in which case technical analysis would be a big part of the process. So if you guys are interested in learning all of the different types of research that I do for my short-term trades, you'll want to subscribe and be sure that you hit the bell for notifications to know when my next video drops on that subject. So I hope this video gave you guys a good basis for how to start fundamental stock analysis for your investment strategy. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, if you guys could do me a favor and smash that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications so you know exactly when I drop new videos like this one. And as with all things, picking the right stock can be a time-consuming effort. But the more you research into the company that you're buying into, the more confident you'll be about owning their stock in your portfolio, which in turn will get you more excited about having them be part of your investment strategy. So with that, hope you guys are staying safe out there, and thanks for joining me today on Daniel's Brew.